This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. The great seasoning such as the Coffee and Q, Smoked S&P Bud, and the Mad Hatter. You can't go wrong with any seasonings over at themadcanadianbbq.com. That is themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use the promo code at checkout, one year two zero. That is one spelled out, O-N-E-Y-E-A-R two zero at checkout for 20% off your entire order for the month of October. Be sure to also check out the Mad Canadian in Cary, Ohio this Friday next to the Marathon Gas Station, 11 to 3. Again, this Friday, 11 to 3 or Sunday in Upper Sandusky, Ohio in front of the Wyandotte County Historical Museum from noon to 4. Again, on Sunday, 12 to 4. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company where they have your butt covered. YouTube. Hi, YouTube. What you drinking, Kyle? I'm still finishing up my Oktoberfest. Uh, I'm also drinking Oktoberfest. That's a, a lawn raker by Land Grant. Nice. Nice. Hint, hint, Land Grant. <laughs> hint, hint, indeed. See that little thing right there? Your logo could be right there. <laughs> We're not super chatty today. Maybe we should just rejoin the audio listeners. Super focused today. Focused. Lots, lots to cover. All right. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you today? I'm doing okay. Can I, can I show you a little something? I'm, I'm doing mm -hmm. a little something and I want to show you. All right. All right. This is for the YouTube listeners. So this is a 7071 brewery shirt. Uh, it's not obviously a real brewery, but yellow pants. And I don't know how well it's coming through over my cheap webcam, but this, this, this is very purple and, and this is very yellow because Braun did it again. Oh, yes. LeBron with his fourth. Yes. With his fault. Just a kid from Akron. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? I know there's a lot of people. Can, can the, well, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan's not playing right now. LeBron is in, instead. Just, just enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Who cares? By the way, I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing that anyone even entered the conversation with Michael Jordan. Yep. The fact that anyone even entered that conversation is amazing. That's yes. it. And he's an Ohio kid. I, I say that we're, we're the same age. Uh, but yeah, he's. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, just shut up and enjoy LeBron James while we still have him. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yep. He's still going strong after 17 years, 17 seasons. Nuts. Yes. Nuts. But anyway, this is not a basketball podcast. You, you know what else is nuts? Nick Saban and Alabama's athletic director testing positive. Yeah. Testing yeah. positive. That's the SEC's been hit hard this past week. Yeah. So like v Vanderbilt's game was canceled. Now Florida's Florida. game. And then just moments ago, right before we started recording here on Wednesday, news come out about Saban and Alabama athletic director coming out testing positive. Yeah. I mean, we, we talked about something like this potentially happening just on the Monday episode, you know, people are worried about, well, will the PAC 12 play enough games? Will the big 10 play enough games? Mm -hmm. I, I think we need to just acknowledge that just because they don't have as many games scheduled, uh, that does not mean that they won't, play as many games and with all of the rapid testing and everything else that the big 10 has in place that should hopefully 
fingers crossed, should hopefully help isolate someone who has it and this would prevent a mass breakout. Yep. So, so hopefully. The question, <laughs> yeah, so the question here for Alabama is, well, what's going to happen here as, um, well, it's already known that uh, Steve Sar- Sarkeesian. Yeah. Make sure I said it right. <laughs> Steve Sarkeesian is you going to- is going to take over while Nick is Nick Saban is staying home. Uh, so that's going to be the question: Is how long is he going to have to stay home? When I imagine that he wouldn't be there for the Alabama Georgia game. So yeah, how, mu- how much? It's of that, the SEC. Who knows? How, mu- how much of that is going to affect uh, this weekend's game with Nick Saban not on the sideline? Yeah, I I have two thoughts on that, and they run contrary to each other. So I'm going to say something and then disagree with myself. Mm -hmm. Part of me thinks that Alabama is such a well-oiled machine that you can take Saban out of the equation for a couple weeks, and that machine keeps on rolling. And that's a credit to Nick Saban. That's not a... You know, that's not, well, he's not important or he, it's all talent. He doesn't matter. That's not me saying that I'm Mm -hmm. saying he does such a good job. Culture building, uh, bringing in good assistant coaches, running a tight ship over there that he can temporarily move out of the situation and it should keep rolling without him. Yeah, the w- the one thing I kept seeing uh, before we started recording was that Saban was able to monitor a practice via a Zoom That's not uh, the same. meeting, and that he he just pretty much just watched and and then if anything came up or anything that he thought needed needed attention, he would just call someone and be like, "Hey, that needs fixed," or "Hey, that's not right." Right, and. So and then it goes, dis- back, it goes back to what you were saying, a well oil machine, but he's kind of there just fine tuning it. It's like, hey, that needs corrected, that needs adjusted. Yeah, but it's not the same. So but well, so now yeah. to disagree with myself, he's such a taskmaster that I wonder what happens when all of a sudden the boss isn't there to watch over everyone all the time. Mm-hmm. Does Alabama relax just that little bit because Saban isn't standing right there does because he burns through assistance real quick. And it's because of how much he demands of them. Does everyone just maybe start running at 85% all of a sudden because the boss isn't in the office? I, you know, we'll, we will never know for sure. And we'll make up whatever narrative fits the result of the Alabama Georgia game. Either Bam is so great that, or, Oh, you take Saban out and see what, you know what I mean? It's, we'll, we'll craft a narrative <laughs> after the Georgia game to exactly yeah. how this affects Alabama. Yep. All right. Enough Alabama. Let's, let's talk about the Ohio state football team here. Yeah. Well, actually Ohio state has, a nickname either of the Buckeyes, not just the football team. <laughs> uh, you know, but they're still the Ohio State football team. Yeah. That's it's not an inaccurate statement. All right. Uh lots of media availability this week, uh sort of giving mm-hmm. us some insight uh from within camp. Um and, and these are all uh quotes or semi quotes. Uh what what's what's the term I'm looking for, Kyle, when a quote's not quite a quote. I'm blanking on on what that word is paraphrase i got there i got there kyle thanks for the help anytime buddy (laughs) um but one thing and just i'm gonna i'm gonna give one piece this is just one piece um lots of great stuff on the scoop insider board this week uh some from alex gleitman some uh from tony gerdeman um, and then we got a, a bunch of stuff from the Vatabuck this week as well. I'm going to give you just one thing, though. Mm-hmm. And, I'm, and I'm going to put it in the form of a question, 
maybe you saw this and maybe you didn't, Kyle, because I know you've been work traveling a lot. So maybe you didn't see this. Apparently, allegedly, they did 40 times at Ohio State. Okay. Now, allegedly. Okay. Well, I, 40 <laughs> times done at the university by the coaches are always a little bit funny. I'll just, yeah. okay. But they did 40s. Who is the fastest player on the Ohio State Buckeyes? Don't think too much because I don't want too much dead air on the podcast. Is so, it a freshman? No. It is not a freshman. Uh, is it a wide receiver? No. Ooh. DB? No. Wow. Who else would it be? Not a running back? Nope. Okay. Not a running back. Um, Keep asking what, questions. What? Not a safety? Not a safety. Wait a minute. No, no nope. dead air, Kyle. Keep rolling. Is it Drew Chrisman? It's not. No, it's not Drew Chrisman. This is a 40 time, not who can flip 40 bottles the quickest. <laughs> That's not the 40 not time. Justin I'm Fields? Justin Fields ran wow. a 4-3 flat, allegedly. <laughs> hmm. Allegedly, yeah. I, I Was it hand-timed? Was it electronically timed? Who, who was pushing the stop and who was pushing the start? <laughs> I don't know. But... My thumb wasn't quite on the start <laughs> button right away. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> yeah. I thought a... the finish line was was closer. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, lots of great stuff on the insider board this week. I don't want to get in trouble with the bosses, so I'm not going to give all of it away. But that's right. the type of stuff you can, in fact, get on the insider board over at the thebuckeyescoop.com. All right, Kyle. Uh, now let's talk about the uh, the public stuff. Let's talk a little bit. We had some uh, press availability this week uh, from the safeties, uh, the court and well, not the quarterbacks, but Justin Fields, <laughs> um, and then of course their coaches. So uh, we have you want to let's let, let let's hold off the quarterbacks. That's what everyone wants to hear. Let's 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 put them on stage last. Let's let's start with the safeties and let's let's start with Coach Barnes. All right, yeah. Uh, so just taking some of some bullet points here. Um, let's see. First one here. Um, Barnes talks about Hooker. Uh, that would be Marcus Hooker. Yeah. I, I was about to say his brother's name here. <laughs> Ho- hopefully, he can put that behind him this season. It's yes. kind of like no one. You know what? No one ever talks about anymore how Michael Thomas is Keyshawn Johnson's nephew. That was always like, oh, that's Michael Thomas. Did you know he's Keyshawn Johnson's nephew? You know, they don't say it anymore. He's yep. just his own dude now. So yeah. let's let's hope Marcus Hooker yeah. can do the same. Well, I don't want to talk about too much with Michael Thomas. There's some well, st- stuff going on listen, there with him. But... Listen, listen, listen. Let me, let me tell you something about Michael Thomas. This isn't the first time... Uh, and, I, and I can't go into detail because I can't confirm any of this. I'm just going to tell you, it's not the first time he's punched a player in practice. It may have happened once or twice at Ohio State. That's all I'm <laughs> saying. Maybe, right. allegedly, potentially, could be. I think we found the name of this episode, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Uh, uh- all right, Hooker, um, Barton says, Hooker is a true center fielder. Um, rangy, instinctive, freakish ball skills. He tracks the ball well and does well in the run game as well. Uh, goes on to say uh, uh, Proctor can play closer to the box and play man-to-man coverage. They both can do both. Yeah, um, one thing that uh, I don't know if Kyle pulled this quote or not, uh, but one thing that they emphasize that they didn't do last year that they haven't done at Ohio state in a while and that they aren't going to do this year. Ohio state is not a split safety team, meaning that the idea of a, this guy's the strong safety and this guy's the free safety Mm -hmm. has much less meaning at Ohio state 
than it does in a bunch of other defenses. It's yeah. basically two safeties. Yep, exactly. Uh, another thing here, Barnes talks about uh, the return game. Um, obviously, COVID has uh, changed their mindsets on depth on the depth charts and having more guys who can play. Uh, mentioned Wilson, McCall, um, Smith, and Jigba, uh, Martinez, Xavier Johnson, and Chris Olave. Um, to name a few who are involved in the return game. That's a lot of names. So there's a lot of names. And he goes on and adds one more <laughs> to that list down the bottom. He actually said that Uki Cooper could also be a guy too. Kyle, are you saving the, are you saving that stuff for Kyle's corner? Speaking of Mookie Cooper and a couple of the other guys you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just yeah. it's in the show yeah. notes. It's technically above where we're at right now, but if you're saving it for Kyle's corner, I don't want to sure. kill your buzz. Sure, sure, we can do that. Okay. But, I'm just yeah. not trying to kill your buzz, I, that's all. I mean, we've mentioned a number of times in the past just how State just hasn't really had a good return team in quite a while. No, it feels like a lot of the good returners over the past let's let's say the Meyer Day era have also come with, um, let's say excitement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Jalen Marshall comes to mind right away. <laughs> yep. But when was the, yeah. When was the last time Ohio state had a return touchdown? I feel like it's been a long, long time. Oh, we, we did this before I can, I have, I would have to look it up when the last time, and if you don't find it by the end of this sentence, let it go. Last time Ohio State returned <laughs> a touchdown was November 2014 by 14. I'm going to say Jalen Marshall was by Jalen Marshall. Wasn't that his three <laughs> touchdown game? Um, that didn't he like return a touchdown, throw a touchdown and run a touchdown that game or something yeah, crazy like that? That was the game. Yeah, I believe that was that game. The wide receiver did everything but catch a touchdown, if I'm remembering correctly. Mm -hmm. Or you know what? No, it was a reception touchdown, but it was one of those passes where they do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was technically a reception touchdown. For anyone uh, just audio listening, that's just that little tiny shovel. I mean, it's not even a shovel pass. It's like a spade pass. It's like a yeah. sand bucket pass. Just like, here you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, how is they just... I don't want to say struggling, just not able to f get a good returner who's able to be like a Ted Ginn, essentially. We haven't, we, we haven't had a Ted Ginn since Ted Ginn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, for the, I mean, we've had Ted Ginn's since Ted Ginn, but ah, maybe, I mean, if we're talking pure return standpoint, then potentially yeah. you're right. Uh, like I said, Jalen Marshall is very good at it. He just had his downsides as well. Yes. All right. All right. Let's move on here. Uh, talking more about the corner backs here. Uh, he said a number of the backs have been making noise. The freshmen have done well. Um, Chavos, uh, before he got hurt, was doing really well. No Ryan. H in there. Just Chavos. Yes. There you go. Uh, Ryan Watts has been banged up to Tyreek Johnson has played a bunch of snaps opposite of Sh Sean Wade, Cameron Brown and seven banks are elite. It's a really good group. Yeah. Um, I think we talked about it. I think it was two episodes ago where you're going to see Sean Wade as, as your number one guy. That's obvious. We all know that. Um, and that we're seeing a little bit of separation with seven banks, um, mm -hmm. potential and, but they're going to split carries or carries. They're going to split snaps regardless, but we might see a little more seven banks than Cameron Brown, but, uh, also expect to see Tyreek Johnson on the field. I, I think that there's been some step up in the cornerback room because I know depth there was definitely a concern and we're seeing the same thing, by the way, out of the safety room. Safety was definitely a big concern coming into the year. 
But as camp has gone on and as we've gotten some additional leaks again, Buckeye Scoop message board, as we've seen some additional leaks come out, it sounds like not only are Hooker and Proctor doing good, but that there are other guys on the team who maybe weren't expected to be the starters, who might be pushing for maybe not starting over Proctor, uh, but are earning snaps at the very least. So safety, both from a starting and depth standpoint, definitely an issue as well as corner, definitely an issue more on the depth standpoint. Uh, but based on what we're hearing out of camp, I think we're going to be okay in that realm. All right. Moving on to the opposite side, the receivers. Uh, Barnes talks about the freshman receivers all bringing something to the table on special teams. Uh, mentioned about Cooper being able to help as a returner, but he's also a physical guy as well. Scott um, plays like a linebacker, and he says, and I mean that in a good way, he can <laughs> cover kicks. Uh, Fleming can really run and be a coverage guy or gunner. And uh, Jackson Smith Njigba, that's always a fun one to say, is just so smooth and has unbelievable ball skills. Yeah, again, we, we talked about the wide receivers, uh, the rookie, the, the freshman wide receivers, uh, in depth on, I believe it was two episodes ago. Uh, so, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it I, I expect to see a, a two deep, and that's three wide receivers, and a two deep have three freshmen in it. Yeah, and I and I think that's what uh, that's what Barnes says that he he has like like to have six deep on the wide receivers. I which, think it's, I think it's day that says, says that yeah, a little bit later. Right. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. coming up here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of jumping ahead here, but since we're talking about coverage here, uh, Drew Chrisman was on too. And he talked about great gunners, those folks who can just at, go down and just sprint to wherever Chrisman's going to punt the ball to. Uh, he said that he's had some great gunners in the past, Denzel Ward was great. Ter Terry McLaurin came and he's probably the best. Uh, he said, he saved me a lot of times. <laughs> it's a role the guy, that guys take a lot of pride in. Olave, Olave, woof, woof. Olave will still be doing it and Josh Proctor is doing it some as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's way weird. To, it's, a way, it's a way to really just being able to get around somebody and just full speed as fast as you can to where the ball is going to go. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's not a thing that we talk about a lot, especially as fans. But when he said, I had some great gunners in the past, and I was immediately just like Terry McLaurin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how good he was at it, where I was just immediately Terry McLaurin, right at the top of my head. Scary Terry. I, I don't care for that nickname. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Hooker. Uh, I got a quote here that kind of stuck out to me. Uh, he said, it's been a blast having uh, having uh, Combs back in the room, even though they do get yelled at a bit. <laughs> nah. <laughs> uh, also says uh, Combs and Barnes have great minds. They're always trying to get more out of the players. and They always manage to get more out of them. Yeah, it's I, can, I just I can just see Combs just running down and back the sidelines, just yelling at players. He might be in the booth this year. Mm. He's a D coordinator now. He yeah. might be in the booth this year. I really want to see him running down I, the sidelines. So, line. Do, I, so I do I. So do I. Everybody does. So do I. Uh, but we'll see. That's not. I said might. That's all. Mm. Uh, let's see. Uh, just a couple more here. Uh, Proctor says that he's uh, he's been watching that Clemson game quite a bit. He said it's a motivator. He wasn't as focused on the little details last year. He had a rough game uh, mm -hmm. against Clemson. I think that's one of the reasons why we were so worried about the safeties this year was because Proctor is going to be the guy this year and he struggled pretty badly uh, against Clemson, but that was last season. And this is this season and players improve. These are 
young guys. These are guys in their late teens and early 20s. Mm -hmm. They are constantly developing and improving and hopefully getting better. Yep. All right. Last one here from our favorite punter, Drew Chrisman on bottle flipping. Yes. (laughs) He still says, I still got it. Every now and then somebody on the team will challenge him and he has to assert his dominance. Well, there you go. Yeah. We all need a thing. (laughs) Yes. All right. That's it for the defensive side there. Offense. Let's Uh, go. Yep. Let's, let's do a quick offense here and then we will do an ad read. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Coach day, coach day. Uh, Asked about seeing so much bad defense this this season, and have they done anything to make sure that doesn't happen to them? Day answers um, that there is an awareness of others' mistakes allows them to show clips and players to take it seriously. So, yeah, so that is, that is that is definitely a positive for I guess one Starting of the late. things to start later is to see a lot of the. Defensive struggles they that we've all been seeing from every conference. Yeah, it's like everyone's right the Big Twelve this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Coach Day also says talks about does the defense defensive game plan game plan change because of what he's seen from other defenses struggling? Uh, he answers no. We do what we do, and we feel strong about our defense. We feel strong about our scheme. Uh, goes on about you just make sure the players are fast and prepared and there's depth that allows rotations uh, offensively they just have to they have to do well also and not put the defense on a short field i really hope that's not the bare minimum expectation from the offense this year because <laughs> i'm expecting touchdowns on every single drive or i will go on twitter and i will be very mean and very passive aggressive and very salty. Mm. All right. Uh, about Jordan Fuller um, saying Fuller was the most unsung hero last year. Facts. Uh, he didn't get as much recognition as he deserved. That's a big void that needs filled Proctor and hooker and Shaw and ransom have gotten better and shown flashes. It says, quote, overall, pleased with what we've seen. Uh, they've all shown good things, and he declined to name a leader. Um, he also goes on says, quote, it's whoever we think deserves an opportunity to play. Now, that being said, when presented with who to put forward to the press, they put forward Hooker and Proctor. <laughs> so... I, you know, he can decline to, and you might just say, well, they're the older guys and you trust them more with the media, which might be the case. But when, when you had to pick two to, to meet Mm -hmm. with the press, it was Hooker and Proctor. Yep. All right. Shiny freshman. Yeah. You know, it talks about the four shiny freshman receivers says he's pleased with how they run routes and run plays. The thing that has hurt them is not being able to be in pads until just recently. They won't really know how good they can be until they've been getting hit in games. They show that they care every day. They show that they want to take care of the football and they have all made big plays. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one thing to run routes and shorts. Mm-hmm. And it's another thing when you're anticipating a, a hit coming. Because yeah. they hit harder now. This isn't high school anymore. They they hit harder now, and, yeah, and also and you're expected to block. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's probably that was the number one thing from Urban Meyer was that you're on the field if you can block first. Yeah, and then run routes and catching second. Uh, yeah, uh, to a lot of fans' dismay <laughs> at times. <laughs> yes, but yeah, that's that was absolutely how Urban ran mm-hmm. things. But yeah, being able to really be in pads and being able to do, see what kind of routes you can run when you're up on press man to man coverage, trying to do your moves to be able to do your routes and all that is completely different than just running routes and playing pitch and catch. 
Absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Talks about Justin Fields. It says uh, Fields sh- Fields has been showing the freshman how to work and what it looks like. He says he's a great role model. That's how it's always been since day arrived, beginning with JTB. Yep. I mean, and that's what it is. You have two incredibly talented quarterbacks. One one of them in ju- in the Justin Fields role in C.J. Stroud. Another one in more of a, I was going to say, I almost said Joe Burrow, just say like traditional drop back guy. But Burrow ran a, could run a lot too. Uh, but yeah. Jack Miller's more of your tradition. Probably Dwayne Haskins might be a better, because uh, I think Dwayne Haskins was the passiest of quarterbacks again in the in the my in the Meyer Day era. So, but again, you have C.J. Stroud, who is sort of a do-it-aller, like Justin Fields, and then you have Jack Miller, who's more of a traditional drop-back passer. Yep. One of the concerns we brought about last episode, uh, the depth at defensive tackle. Uh, yeah. Day, Day addressed that set, and he says it is the biggest concern right now. Uh, hopefully they can get a few guys back, but there are definitely things they can do. Yeah. Uh, defensive tackle, we're not going to see a lot of production out of the defensive tackle this year. Uh, we might see a situation like we saw when Nick Bosa was a freshman where they – incorporate some sort of rushman package the rushman package yes. uh where they might bring some defensive ends in to play defensive tackles in mm. obvious passing situations probably like under the the three technique yeah in the three technique like on third and longs and stuff like that obvious passing situations uh because it's the 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 talent especially the depth and the defensive tackles is someone that Ohio state loves to rotate that we might see, you know, probably I think Tyreek Smith, bigger body guy might be someone who plays some three tech defensive tackle in obvious passing situations. Again, we're not going to see a ton of production out of defensive tackles this year. Uh, the entire Haskell Garrett situation has absolutely hurt Ohio state in, in, and we're happy. He's okay. Yeah. That's the first and foremost. We're happy uh, that he is as okay as he is. Um, but that hurt Ohio state in a place where they were already a little bit shallow depth wise. Mm-hmm. Um, the defensive tackle has, has definitely overtaken the safety we're starting to feel pretty good about the safeties, but now we're starting to feel a little bit iffy about the defensive tackles yep. uh, as, as camp goes on. Yeah. Definitely be paying a closer attention to that. That being said, I don't think that they're talent deficient. I, I think that the defensive tackles can go in there and, and maintain. I just don't think it's going to be a situation where you, like I said, you get like a, a ton of big plays in production out of defensive tackles making their making their presence known or or maybe not making their presence known uh, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh just not messing up might might yeah. be what we want out of defensive tackles this year just sort of holding their own mm. all right last thing here going on the opposite side the slobs talks about nicholas petit Freire and <laughs> paris johnson <laughs> uh what? will play will both play uh, yeah. Goes on to say NPF has taken most of the reps with the ones at right tackle. They will figure out who's going to play in the game at all positions and then figure out the rep counts from there. Uh, Petit Furry is going to have a heck of a year. As much as I want to see Paris Johnson on the field, I don't know that I like hearing this. I think yeah, I'd rather I want hear consistency. I want five guys named. That's your five guys. Yeah, I think I'd rather hear that NPF is so great that we never want to take him off the field ever. I think that's more, Mm -hmm. to me, your tackles are like your quarterbacks. I I don't want you screwing around with them. Mm -hmm. I want want my number one left tackle, my number one right tackle, and those guys are there unless it's a 35-point blowout. So that makes me nervous. Uh, Yeah, that makes me, I don't like that. That, Mm -hmm. I, I get that. He's trying, I, I, Ryan Day is trying to say, 
Paris Johnson is great. Uh, I think that is what he is trying to say. And if that's what he's saying, great, we believe you. Uh, <laughs> but I, I don't, I don't want to hear that they might be sharing reps at right tackle. That's not what mm-hmm. I want to hear at all. All right, Kyle. Um, now, who, what I do want to hear is about uh, some Mad Canadian Spices. Mad Canadian Spices. Uh, I've grabbed just grabbed one of the ones on my desk. This is the Cajun. That's the Cajun right there. Focus. Camera focus. Nope, not going to focus. Uh, we all know what Cajun is. This is the Mad Canadian's version of it. Let's see. Let's, let's, it's cumin. It's coriander. Spanish paprika. Kosher salt. Uh, black pepper. And guess what, Kyle? Additional spices. Where were you on that one? You're supposed to hit me up with that additional spices. <sighs> Kyle. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we got the Mad Hatter. I love the Mad Hatter. Uh, I, I was actually just thinking about this. I haven't mentioned this one in a while about the Mad Hatter. A while back, I was told by the Mad Canadian himself that if you're ever doing like a spicy um, Bloody Mary... As your Mad Hatter right there. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe if you're doing a spicy margarita as well, there's lime in here, but I don't know if or spicy margarita is a thing. I don't think that's a thing, but a spicy uh, Virgin Mary. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, all of this so much more. Uh, let's do uh, the Brits blend, the coffee and cue, the snore and heat, the Cajun, the smoke, the savory, the two border. I feel like we haven't talked about the two border in a while. Um, it's maple. That's that's pretty great. And there's some pepper in there, so it's like a spicy sweet mix right there in right there in the bottle. Uh, it's great on eggs. I love it in my eggs. I love it on my sausage, on my bacon. Uh, that's that's some great stuff right there. Uh, the S and P bud. I'm waiting on my order. Mad Canadian. Where's my new S and P bud? I'm out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just bought it. <laughs> I want it now. (laughs) Uh, The Discord and the Four Horsemen, those are your super spicy blends. Uh, All of this uh, and a bunch of other ones I haven't even mentioned yet, including the Ope, which is a smoked ranch. I feel like we haven't mentioned the Ope in a while. It's smoked ranch. It's great. How how can you go wrong? Mm -hmm. All of this and more can be found at madcanadianbbq.com. Use promo code one year 20 That's one Y E A R 20 at checkout to get 20% off your entire order. That promo code's good through all of October. Um, if you are somehow some reason listening to this after October, you can still use sloop cast 10 at checkout to get 10% off your entire order. Um, and then if you are in Cary, Ohio on this Saturday, uh, he will be at the marathon gas station from 11 to three on Friday. And on Sunday, He's venturing out of Cary, Ohio and going all the way to Upper Sandusky. Uh, that, that's on Sunday. Uh, and you can find him at the Wyandotte County Historical Museum from noon to four. All of that and more can be found at madcanadianbbq.com where he has your butts covered. Now, before we get into the next part here, Jared, just an update here, some recruiting update. Okay. Uh player that we were keeping an eye out for has dropped their top three just now to me sit to me say Adelie. okay uh he comes out with his top three of alabama florida and texas a&m yeah he decommitted from ohio state and like like we said the the decommit mm-hmm. recommit is they always they decommit and then they always come out and say, "Oh, but I'm still highly considering that." And and it happens. The decommit recommit, it does happen. I uh, just never hold out much hope for it. Mm-hmm. All, All right. right, share that bit of news before we go into the rest of our episode. Yeah, I wasn't holding out any hope for Adelie anyway. It's fine. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, next up here, Big Ten schedule updates. Yeah. What do we got here, Jared? Uh, the Big Ten released a full schedule for October 24th. Now, we already know who's playing who. That we knew already. Uh, mm-hmm. But we have uh, TV and kickoff times. But, and you can find all that. We're not going to read all that to you. But what we do have 
is a slate of Friday games that have been announced. Ooh. And it's very Big Ten West heavy. If you're in the Big Good. Ten West, Good. you're getting some Friday games. Uh, Illinois, on October 23rd, we have Illinois at Wisconsin. That might be one of our early, uh, that, that, that might be a slew pick. Jared. Yeah. This means next Friday's episode. We get to talk about Buckeye football games. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. One more week. One more week. We're almost there. We're almost there. All right. Um, October 30th. Again, these are all Friday games I'm mentioning. Minnesota's mm-hmm. going to Maryland. On the 13th, I was going to Minnesota. On November 20th, Purdue's going to Minnesota. And on the 27th, Nebraska is going to Iowa. Very Minnesota. Very Minnesota heavy. Uh, Friday nights are now golden. It's a, it's a golden Friday night. Be sure to bring your oars. Yeah. Uh, Maryland is the only Big Ten East team mentioned. As long as it's not Ohio State. <laughs> Death to divisions. Death to divisions. Yes. All right. Let's do some uh, let's slew go picks. Back to, oh, nope. Cop. Let's go back to the Saturday games real quick. Well, actually, we'll, we'll cover them next week. We'll, we'll cover, cover them next, them next week. week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. yes. All right. Let's let's talk about what you were just about to say here. The slew picks. Yes. Let's do uh, that. One note, one note here is that on our list was the Florida LSU game, but... Obviously, with that being canceled, we had to take that out and replace it with Boston College, Virginia Tech was the one we added. Kind of a big drop there. (laughs) (laughs) Good, Jeff Halfley. Well, I mean, is it really? I mean, you have. Yeah. Boston. I'm going somewhere with this. (laughs) You got Boston College and Virginia Tech, Uh one ranked team. Uh Uh-huh. Florida and LSU, one ranked team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Florida, at least before last week, uh, we considered a playoff team, and I don't think we consider Virginia Tech a playoff team. Mm-hmm. And Florida could still somehow potentially back. To, it's very chaotic this year. I don't think one loss is if if they win the SEC with this one loss, Florida still makes. Florida's not out of playoffs. Is all mm-hmm. I'm saying. Uh, Virginia Tech, I'm, I'm just not holding out any hope whatsoever that they're making the playoffs. So, right. to me, that's what makes it a much bigger game. It has actual national implications, uh, and the best thing Virginia Tech could possibly hope for is losing to Clemson in the <laughs> ACC championship game. That's that's the peak of their season. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's go ahead and cover our slip picks here. Yeah. First up here. Pittsburgh heading on over to Miami. Oh, it's almost like the Big East is still a thing. Oh, how cute. <laughs> Miami is a 10 and a half point favorite. And what is it up? I think every week, Jared. Yeah. And I'm I'm looking at you because you're doing the pick. You, you've you picked the games. Uh, you, you can take a turn if you want to. Okay. Maybe I will. Okay. Because I'm tired of seeing Pittsburgh on here. I'm always going to I'm always going to pick against them here. I'm going with Miami. I, to be fair, they're here because of Miami. This game is here because of Miami, not Pittsburgh. Sorry, Noah, if you're listening, I'm sorry. But this isn't here. My little brother goes to Pitt. This isn't here because of Miami or because of Pittsburgh. I promise. This is here because of Miami. Okay. All right. I'm still picking Miami. Yeah. Um, me too. Uh, 10 and a half points. Not quite enough to scare me off. Uh, Pittsburgh loses to Boston college last week. albeit by one point in overtime. NC state. They lost albeit by one point. So Pittsburgh one and two, but, uh, they are also, or excuse me, no. Wow, what the heck is going on? Have they actually played five games already? Is that right? Wow. ACC getting things done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they started early. They yeah. started. 
not early. They started on time. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> all, right, um, who, all right, so you picked Miami. I'm picking then. Miami. Um, in the two losses that Pitt has, they were both by one point. That kind of ekes me towards Pitt. But I'm going to go with Miami. Miami, I'm not surprised what happened last week. Clemson's a far more talented team. What we find out this week is what kind of culture do they have at Miami? Mm -hmm. What happens after you get punched in the face? Yep, exactly. All right, next game here, the love... Nope, we're not doing thanks. Cincinnati is <laughs> taking on Tulsa. Your fighting fickles is a four and a half point favorite. I I don't really know much about this Tulsa team. I just know that Cincinnati has a pretty good defense. Since, uh, yeah, Cincinnati has a pretty good defense. But let me point this out. We've only seen Tulsa twice this year, so mm-hmm. that's not helpful. They took Oklahoma State, who has since then been looking pretty good. Mm-hmm. So they took Oklahoma State down to the wire in a 16-7 to game. Once again, proving that teams outside of the Big 12 can play defense, holding Oklahoma State to only 16 points. Uh, and then they beat UCF last week. And UCF is a really good American yeah. Conference team. That's true. Um Cincinnati, on the other hand, has played good games. Um, they they beat the crap out of Austin P and Austin P is an FCS school. Uh, mm-hmm. Then they had a convincing win against Army and a convincing win against UCF. Excuse me, USF. I Tulsa has just looked really good, and I'm. This is one of those situations where I'm just going to pick the underdog. Okay. So I'm going to go with Tulsa. I I don't know if Tulsa wins or not, but I'm, I'm like 60, 40 that Cincinnati will win this game. And that's not enough to persuade me away from a five point cover. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right. All right. Our first disagreement. Um, Next up here, Louisville taken on Notre Dame. Notre Dame is a 16 and a half point favorite. Who do you got here, Jared? Uh, you got Louisville, you got Notre Dame. What I'm sort of banking on here is the fact that Louisville has given up a lot of points. Mm-hmm. I don't know, because I really don't know how good Notre Dame is. Uh, I still kind of point to them struggling against Duke. Uh, they had a really good game against USF. Uh, and then I really wanted them to beat the doors off of Florida State, which they did do eventually. If you look at the final score, it it's 42-26. It definitely mm-hmm. looks like that they did, but eh, they didn't really. Um, I'm going to go Notre Dame here, but I honestly don't feel great about it. Um I'm banking mostly on Louisville's defense being bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm going with Notre Dame just mainly because of like what you just said, where I, Louisville's defense just looks bad. Yeah, they just look bad. Uh, next next game here, Jared, Texas A and M taking on Mississippi State. A and M is a six and a half point favorite. I don't know why to me after yeah. what i've seen from texas and um last week when they they surprised they surprised us with how they beat they beat florida yeah but then they like the first week they they look bad but they did beat vanderbilt yeah a, a struggle they, game against vanderbilt for sure mm-hmm. they got their butts handed to them against alabama yeah and then you look at Mississippi State here, where they beat LSU the f- first week, which uh, by as the weeks go looks less mm-hmm. and less impressive. Yep. They lost to Arkansas, yeah, and then they lost to Kentucky, where they only scored two points. Yeah, and it's give it's me that. the Aggies. Yeah, give me the Aggies. 
what really pushes me to absolutely 100% go with the Aggies here <laughs> is is uh, Mississippi State scoring two points against Kentucky. Yes. Because I could have potentially spun this as like a shootout in my head. And I still think it's possible that we see some sort of Big 12-esque shootout in this game. Texas A&M going back to its roots. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I still am kind of nervous that that's what happens here. I'll tell you what, the over-under is at 54, and I would be going over if I were a betting man and... You, you see how bad my slip picks are. I'm not. <laughs> so that um, means do the under. <laughs> probably. Uh, but I'm going <laughs> Texas A&M here, especially with it being underneath seven mm-hmm. points. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up here, another common, common thing I keep seeing. North Carolina. Listen, North we don't North have Carolina. a lot of, we don't have a lot of options right now. <laughs> North Carolina taking on Florida State. The Tar Heels are a 12 and a half point favorite. Oh, I think it's my pick here. I think it's my pick, my pick. This one, this one I really did struggle around. I mean, at first you're like, oh, Florida State, they're they're a bad team. But they did hang around with Notre Dame for a little while there. And then Notre Dame kind of just uh, took off from there. Yeah. But I just, they got, I just don't know about this North Carolina team that they got beat by Georgia Tech. They got run out of the run out of the stadium by Miami. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Jacksonville State game, don't let yeah. that forty-one to twenty-four fool you. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. that was tacked on late. That was a that was a competitive football game for a very long time. Mm-hmm. You know, I you know I had my pick at Florida State, but I think I'm, I think I'm going to change it to the Tar Heels here. Did I talk you Tar, into it? The Tar Heels did surprise me. Um, they won uh, by 11 points against Virginia Tech last last weekend, and they just find ways to win here. And and I say this too: um, Virginia Tech made a bit of a comeback. And it was a legitimate comeback. They they were in position to potentially win that football game at one point, mm-hmm. especially considering where they were. But North Carolina blew the doors off Virginia Tech early in that game. Yeah. But yeah, I'll go with the Tar Heels here. Yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, I'm also going with the Tar Heels. They beat Boston College with only four points, but uh, to Boston College's credit, That's a little weird because Boston College went for a tying two-point conversion and it got returned. So that was almost an overtime game. But also Boston College turns out not that bad, as as it turns out. Um, So North Carolina, I think, is a real solid football team. I can't wait. Did they they play Miami this year? North Carolina? North Carolina and Miami play this year? Yep, they do. First weekend in December. I'm looking forward to that game. Well, you're probably looking forward to the game before that. They take on Notre Dame. I think they beat Notre Dame. I, I mean, they I, have a really they have a really good shot going undefeated going into Thanksgiving weekend here. Florida State, NC State, Virginia, Duke, Wake Forest. And then they finish off Notre Dame, Miami, and <laughs> it's funny. I did that. I think I did this last episode. Yeah, or two weeks ago. Western Carolina, Western Carolina, to um, wrap up their season. Yeah, uh, I, I like the Tar Heels. Um, I I think that they're. I, I want to know who's the best, the second best team in the ACC. And yep. right now, for me, it's between them and Miami. Notre Dame's also in the conversation. I acknowledge that, but it's. It'll it'll be it's it kind of stinks for them that they have to play Notre Dame and Miami back to back. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up. So here, I went Jer- with I went with North Carolina in case I yep. didn't actually say that. Yep. We both did here. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna skip that the next one here because we'll do the numbers for that one. Um, next up here we have Boston College 
taking on Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech is a 10 and a half point favorite. What do you got here, Jared? I didn't have a ton of time to think about this one, which is probably a good thing. Uh, this was our late edition. We added this in at the last second because of Florida and LSU getting canceled or postponed or whatever the heck it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I end up going with Boston College here. Uh, if you look at the scores, Boston, uh, Boston College has beat Duke. And okay, that's that's fine. You beat Duke. Uh, they beat Texas State in a close game. So that's that's not the best, but they lost to NC state in again, why are, or excuse me, I said NC state. Uh, they lost to UNC, uh, in a real close fashion, closer than the score indicates because uh, I just talked about it. And then they beat Pitt last week. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying that they win this football game. Uh, Virginia tech is a good team, but if the bar is North Carolina, well, and you can, I, and you can North Carolina, both, common you opponent. You can compare them both to North Carolina and Duke. They both played. Both I don't teams. compare. I, Duke's not a litmus test. <laughs> but I think Virginia Tech and UNC are. And I, I just think 10's a big number. That's all. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know if Halfley pulls it off or not. But if you look at how well they performed against UNC and how well UNC did against Virginia Tech, I think it's reasonable to expect them to, at the very least, lose by less than 10 and a half points. Yeah, 10 10 and a half is is definitely a lot higher than I was anticipating this to be. So I'll take on the Eagles. I'll take the Eagles here. All right, Jared, our last one here we have is Georgia and Alabama. Alabama is a five and a half point favorite. I'm curious. I'm going I'm to look it up right now as I talk. Kyle, do you want to do, you want to talk first? Sure. And before the whole announcement with Sabin and the athletic director, mainly Sabin, um, being tested positive for the COVID virus, I didn't really think too much about it, about picking Bama here to cover. But obviously, if Saban's not going to be the coach uh, on the sidelines there for this weekend, it definitely makes me really want to rethink this here. The the spread, by the way, has moved, is what I was looking up. Okay. Now, our picks are locked in. Yes. Our, our, Our software that we're using says five and a half. It's locked in. So we're still picking at five and a half. But depending upon which casino you look at right now, Mm-hmm. It's either at four and a half or three and a half. So the Saban news has moved the line by a point or two point or two points. Yeah, that's 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 tough. This is definitely my the toughest one for me in this week's picks here. I, I'll just I'll just still stick with Alabama. We've we've just seen a lot of inconsistency with Georgia uh, so far this year, but. Their talent takes over, though, in the second half. But they don't have that talent advantage. In this you don't game. have that. Yeah, you don't have that in this game here. But then again, you look at Alabama and the defensive struggle they've had in one game. I imagine that they would probably have fixed that. Uh, we'll see here. Though, given a week to try to fix things up here, I st- I still think Alabama still covers this. It's I'd say they win it by a touchdown there, five and a half points. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick Bama to cover. I'm still going Bama. Um, I, I wish we got to vote on the new line or I, that's not the right word, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I they they beat Mississippi State in a in a stupid game where they gave up a lot of points. I acknowledge that, but they they walloped Texas A and M. They walloped Mizzou. I'm I'm just not worried about it. You mean Ole Miss, not Mississippi State? Yes, I always do that. I always mix those two up because they're like the same team in my head. I will. <laughs> anyone who's listened to this podcast for a long time, no, I will just mix those two around. Um, anyway, the the point is is that does removing Saban from Alabama affect Alabama 
And this goes back to the conversation we were having at the start of the podcast. I tend to lean towards Alabama being such a well-oiled machine that it can survive a game or two without Nick Saban and be just fine. Well, this would just be like when Urban Meyer wasn't on the sideline too. How well, how well is they, Sar- how well, Sarkeesian's not Ryan day. <laughs> I understand, but yeah. it, it, it's a similar situation where you don't have your, your, your head, your main head coach, your, your star in, yeah. of your program. They're on the sidelines. So I, it's a similar, it's a similar situation there. So. Yeah. I, I kind of don't think it matters to be honest, not, not this week, depending upon how this goes and how long it lasts. Yeah. Then, then that's potentially an issue. They, they play Tennessee next week. Could it come into play then? if Nick Saban's then away from the team for a week and a half, as opposed mm-hmm. to a few days. Yeah. Nick Saban's not their offensive play caller. If he was, I'd be more concerned. I'd be more concerned about Ryan day leaving Ohio state than I would be Nick Saban leaving Ohio state. Cause Ryan day is involved in the play calling. I, I think that Nick Saban has done a great job positioning himself as a manager, as a CEO, uh, if you will, of Alabama football and delegating stuff down to his very highly paid staff. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think that pays off for him and Georgia this week. And I'm not, I'm not saying it affects nothing because it absolutely affects it. But I, I just have such little faith in Georgia's offense. Um, that I'm, I'm still going to go with Alabama here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else or any other games that people should keep an eye out for? No, we, we scraped the bottom of the barrel on this one. <laughs> Agreed. All right, let's get to some Ask Sloopcast questions here. We'll Lightning try round. These, try to do these quick. Sun Card asks, if the strength of your offensive line is the interior, how does that shape your offense? Theoretically, it means you would gear more towards running the ball. That's your, yes. your, if you, if you're, so if you're saying the strength of your offensive line is the interior, then you might then by the process of elimination, say that your tackles are bad and that's going to affect you more in your passing game than it is in your running mm-hmm. game. And in, in the, in those type of situations too, is when you would see a lot more tight end and running backs, uh, blocking, or or dare I say the F word, Jared? Fullback? Fullback as well. Yeah. Uh, tight ends, mostly, I would say. But yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Dinger asks, with a surprisingly poor start for some other marquee, in quotes, programs this year, is there any concern we go from smug to two and two in a few weeks? I sure hope not. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't think so. I, over the past few weeks, I think I've talked a lot about culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, is the culture of your program strong? And one thing I have a lot of faith in is that the culture at Ohio State is strong. Yes. And I think we saw that the way the team banded together when we all thought a season wasn't going to happen. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so Austin, I just, just want to say that I don't think that happens because the culture is strong. Yeah. All right. Austin Formation uh, asks us, do you think Ohio State goes after Arch Manning? They'll they'll kick the tires. Mm-hmm. He's right. incredibly talented quarterback. They'll try. What are the odds we get two one-loss teams in the playoff? High. Yes. We've had high. an incredible amount of chaos already this year. I had a, I had a talk with um, a coworker this week, and he asked me about the odds of a two-loss SEC team going in because he's an SEC guy, so I'm playing ball with him. But <laughs> um, and I said, depends on how the other conferences do. Yeah, basically, but with the high level of 
I don't I don't know about two SEC teams per se, but I think we you could in theory see a situation this year in which you see our first. There hasn't been a two loss team in the playoff yet, right? I don't think so. No. Yeah, that that's on the table this year. Yep. Just All right. given the chaos we've seen already. All right, one more question from from him. Uh, part two of a question I asked last week: Would you rather have the nation's best left tackle or the nation's best defensive end? Left tackle. Yes, left tackle. Absolutely. You you're, can do. You're, you can protect, do. You're protecting your quarterback. You can your, do your things. Side. Yeah, you can. You can do things to compensate with a incredible. I mean, and again, it's sort of like we were talking about with the wide receivers last last week. You can compensate for a defensive tackle by putting in tight ends and doing and sort of shifting your running back over to that side to sort of take out uh, and assist with an incredibly talented defensive end. It's one of the reasons why you didn't see Chase Young get any sacks, and I think in his last three games. But then that does also free up the other defensive linemen to make plays. Yep. Um, but ultimately, the name of football in 2020 at any level is keep your quarterback healthy. Yes. Yes. All right. And that's your left tackle. Duncan from the Discord. Since fans aren't allowed in, and my wife will give me chores when the game gets lopsided and, and, or she gets bored, what are the best classy bars in Columbus to watch the game? Classy being space to breathe and no need to fight your way into the bar for another drink. By extension, when does Jackie O's open? <laughs> uh, I know they're renovating the uh, old elevator space, so that won't that won't be for football season. Uh, as far I think what you're looking for instead of a bar is a restaurant. If you're talking about not fighting for drinks and if you're talking about, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. Cause I, I, I watch Ohio state games at home. Uh, just we, at least partially because of the sloop cast. Um, I do a lot of stuff. I, I post touchdown cards. I do. Um, I, I want to tweet about the game. Uh, I, I like to watch Ohio State games at home. So I'm not super experienced in this realm. Um, but I will say this. I'll give a I'll give a, a, a shout out to a place I love. Uh, there's a little place in the Graceland Shopping Center, which is not too far away from my house, called Pat and Gracie's. Everyone can go check out Pat and Gracie's. Uh, I think they have some outside seating now, which is a new thing for them. And, uh, that's, that's one of my, you might probably not more, more likely on a Sunday, uh, catch me at Pat and Gracie's over in the Graceland shopping center, uh, in Clintonville in Columbus in Ohio. <laughs> um, that, that's one of my favorite places to go, but I, mm -hmm. there's, there's tons of great places, bars who will have Ohio state on. They will, if there's a TV, <laughs> Ohio state will be on it. Yes. Um, there's lots of great tap rooms that always have TVs going. Um, you, 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 I think would be hard pressed. Uh, just find yourself a nice tap room. They'll, they'll probably have some TVs going. That would be my recommendation to you. That and Pat and Gracie's. I like, I like Pat and Gracie's. I'll just mm -hmm. give, I'm just giving them some free advertising because <laughs> the restaurants need it. Restaurants need some love right now. And I would be devastated if anything happened to Pat and Gracie's. So everyone go to Pat and Gracie's Graceland shopping center, Clintonville, Ohio, Clintonville, Columbus, Ohio, right off of high street, North high street. Mm -hmm. All right. Last question from, Oh, I'm forgetting his name here. Uh, you remember what his actual name is? I, I'm drawing a blank. I apologize here. <laughs> Oh, Kyle. Me too. Um, <laughs> he has he has a funny thing in the Discord. Is it Cody? Corey? Shoot, I am so so sorry. Yeah, let me let me ask the question while you're, you're while you're looking it up real quick. With the season being ten days away, uh, he's one of our. He's... I just want to say he's one of our newer guys. So this isn't us being totally shitty, Cooper. 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 Sorry about that, Cooper. We're very uh, sorry. Uh, and once again, for the record, he's one of our newest patrons. So <laughs> we're not being totally shitty right now. Yep. Cooper asks, with the season being 10 days away, what are your guys' outlook on the season actually going 
going through and where Ohio State will finish. COVID cases jumping up around schools and possible fake Bama. And a pos- I think he's just saying an possible fake Bama. Yeah. Um, I don't. First off, I don't think Bama's fake. I know they had a really bad defensive game. Uh, but I, I, I still think Bama is the third best team in the country. Yeah. That's, that's, I stand very firm on that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I still think, I still think it's Ohio state Clemson separate Bama, Bama big separate. <laughs> it's like, there's like a quality 10, 15 teams that could potentially get that fourth spot in the playoff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that they'll push through. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a lot of money on the line. And I think that everyone went to a lot of lengths to make sure this season happens and that they'll probably push through. Um, We are better at treating this virus now than we were. Um, I'm it's one of the reasons why I'm talking about Nick Saban in a, when will he come back? manner as opposed to will he survive it manner Nick Saban is not young and that is certainly on the table but he has a lot of money and he'll get the best medicine and the best care in the world so you you know I I feel like he'll probably be fine Um, and we do know more about this virus in October than we did in March it Mm -hmm. is far more survivable because our hospitals aren't overcrowded because we have at least slowed stuff down um, and again, he has money. <laughs> he'll, 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 he'll have access to doctors and he'll have access to medicine. Um, so I, I'm optimistic that Nick Saban will be okay. I certainly hope he's okay. It might, it would probably take something like that. God forbid to actually jeopardize the season from moving forward. Um, if, God forbid something happened like that, then I think that could jeopardize the season. Uh, I remain optimistic that the season does actually go through. That being said, I was also optimistic that the Big Ten wasn't going to cancel the season right before they canceled the season. So Mm -hmm. uh, this is constantly changing. All of this is constantly changing and it could change on a dime again. Like I said, God forbid something happens to Nick Saban or Les Miles, who have both been diagnosed in the past couple of weeks. God forbid. I mean, I'm yeah. not. Yeah, just God forbid. But if that happens, how does the college football world react? And mm-hmm. I can't say that I know the answer to that question. Yeah. All right. And that is all for today, Jared. All right. Um, that's the end of today's show. Um, I want to, che- uh, encourage everyone to check out the master link, uh, which is down in the doobly doo down in the show notes. Um, it has all of our stuff. You can buy some, uh, cool 7071 merch, which is our, that's our stuff that doesn't like scream. This is from a podcast. <laughs> I know mm-hmm. a lot of people don't necessarily want to wear like podcast swag. So this is just, uh, some cool, Ohio centric designs in our 7071 store. Kyle, on the other hand, is in fact wearing Sloopcast merch. That's our uh, crew parody. It is a parody. Legally speaking, it is a parody. That is that's our crew parody shirt. It Ooh. says Buckeye Sloopcast on a shield mm-hmm. that looks roughly familiar. Different Not colors. The same colors. Not the same colors. Hmm. Nope. And, um, uh, you can check out the Patreon thing and we'll, we'll try not to forget your name. I am sorry, so sorry, Cooper. Jesus. I am so sorry. Um, but yeah, you get access to, um, doing sloop picks with us. You get access to, um, the discord, which is almost always a good time you can talk to us directly. You can talk to the other people who like the podcast a lot directly. Um, I will sometimes share information in there that I don't share on the podcast. Uh, the mad Canadian sometimes hands out coupon codes. 
that are better than the 20% off code that we are currently sharing publicly. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Um, it might be worth it just to join for some Mad Canadian coupon codes and a little bit of barbecue talk in the Discord channel. Um, all of that and a lot more uh, uh, early access to episodes. Um, I've been getting out those early access stuff pretty early so far this season. I can't promise uh, I'll keep doing that. But so far, uh, I think I got the Sunday episode or the Monday episode out real early on Sunday last week. So you get early access to episodes. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, we we uh, had to pause our live listen ins because the discord we were using discord to do our video conference for the podcast recording and it sucked just the audio quality wasn't very good uh so we did have to go back to zoom and we're still figuring out a way to get the live listen ins for uh our podcast our patreon people um but we do plan on reinstating that soon. So you might be able to do some live listen ins, which could lead to live chat ins and stuff like that. So Patreon, uh, a lot of fun. Um, mm -hmm. And we, we kind of, we want to start doing more video stuff. We might want to try and do two episodes a week year round. There's a lot of stuff that we want to do, but we kind of need the financial resources to do it. So if you want more from us, if you want more video content and if you want more frequent stuff and maybe bonus video content that isn't the podcast, maybe some little tiny mini mini sods or stuff like that, that's stuff that we want to do, but we kind of just need the financial resources for. So uh, you can get access to all the stuff I just mentioned for only three dollars a month at our Patreon store. Uh, and that's all the, that's all of that that I feel like doing. Kyle, what do you have in Kyle's corner? Uh, black stripes got black, black stripes. stripes here uh had a third one right before we started recording here so added third one to the list so we got three for today's episode wide receiver a hey, third time we're mentioning him mookie cooper yeah that's our third mention of mookie cooper and that's now all four of the freshman wide receiver uh getting mm -hmm. getting their black stripe removed yep uh linebacker mitchell melton and center luke whipler there you Luke go. Whipler, a fan favorite for many uh, Buckeye uh, media members. Oh, yeah? Mm hmm Yeah. I've seen a lot of love for Luke. That's, I've seen a lot of love. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's it. That's it. I don't want to that's talk it. about the crew because they're not looking good, so we're just going <laughs> to... That's just happening gonna as we're episode. talking. I might, I, might be, I might be checking it. I might be checking it right yeah, now. That might be a... That might be a thing I'm doing right this second. Mm -hmm. I might yeah. I might be checking. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. No. Just, no. just end the show. Just end should, the show. Should I, should I not? Just end the show. Should I not? Just, Jerry, Jerry, yeah. Yeah. just end the show. Okay. Uh, tonight's ending music will be Forest and the Evergreens. Uh, they're, a, they're a fun band. I'm, I'm just going to say they're a fun band. You, you, you're you about to listen to it. You don't need me to sell you on it. I'm just going to say they're a lot of fun. If you ever get a chance to see them live once... Uh, live music becomes a thing again, which I hope is 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 soon. Um, then yeah, be sure to check out Forest and the Evergreens. So uh, make sure to check the show notes. Uh, you can get a link to their Bandcamp page and the information on whichever song I end up picking. Uh, so you can find all that down there. Again, you can find the master link down there. And uh, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Forest in the Evergreens. YouTube. What's up, YouTube? I am ready to watch some Buckeye football. Almost, man. We're almost there. We're in the single digits. I mean, almost taste it. <laughs> there's a lot of people who listen to this episode on Saturday morning, despite the fact that it comes out on Friday. Uh, we get a lot of downloads Saturday morning. So for those people, um, of course, the, all the podcast numbers I'm talking about right now are podcast numbers and not YouTube numbers. So I have no idea. Only YouTube we're talking right now. It's only seven days for those people. It's only seven days. Six yep. days to Big Ten football. 
know, just need a little bit of Wisconsin on your tongue just to tide you over for Ohio State. We're almost there. We're almost there. All right, let's rejoin our audio only listeners. Once again, that was Forest in the Evergreens uh, doing tonight's ending music. And of course, uh, today's podcast was brought to you as it has been for over a year now. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Don't let that name fool you, Kyle. The man's an Ohioan at heart. Uh, he lives in Cary, Ohio. Uh, that is where his spice organization is run. That is, of course, where the Buckeye bus is parked when it's uh, not out serving food. Now, of course, sometimes it's also serving food in Cary, Ohio, as it will be this Friday which is the day that most of you listen to this episode uh, from 11 to three at the marathon gas station in Cary, Ohio. Um, if you uh, aren't listening to this on Friday and you missed that opportunity or, or, or maybe you don't uh, can't get to Cary, Ohio. Well, if you're closer to upper Sandusky, uh, he will be at the Wyandotte County historical museum from noon to four on Sunday. So you could get there right at noon Get some rad barbecue. Don't pull on his beard. I was corrected. I got some angry emails. <laughs> Do not pull on his beard. Uh, pull on his beard. Guys, pull on his beard. Uh, <laughs> uh, did I say the whole thing? Yeah, get, get there right at noon. Get yourself some rad barbecue and be home in time for some NFL. Uh, again, that is Upper Sandusky, the Wyandotte County Historical Museum on Sunday from noon to four. Now, if you can't make it to any of those things, you can make some amazing barbecue at home using the very same spices that he uses on the barbecue bus at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Kyle, mega read. Let's go. Brits blend, coffee and Q, the Sonoran heat, the Cajun, the smoke, the savory, the two border, the S&P, but the carry steak, the discord, the op- the four horsemen, the old fashioned and the mad hatter. I didn't get that in one breath. I'll get it next week. Do better next week. I'll do better next week. Uh, you can get 20% off your spice order using the promo code one O N E year two zero at checkout. Get 20% off your entire order. Um, if you, for some reason you're listening to this and it's no longer October, uh, you can still use Sleepcast 10 at checkout and get 10% off your entire order. But the one year 20 expires um, at how ha- on Halloween or at like 1159 and 59 seconds on Halloween. So hurry up. It's chili season. Get some of that Brits blend. Put that in your chili. You'll thank me later. Um, uh, or don't thank me. Thank the mad Canadian because he has your butt covered. 